Welcome back to Fast Gadgets. Today we're going to talk about WannaCry, Linux, and whether or not you should be concerned that your Linux distribution can be infected by WannaCry, also known as Wanna Decryptor. Now, I've seen a couple of videos about concerns with Linux and using Wine, uh, which of course is a Windows emulator, so it has a portion of the Windows subsystem that lets you emulate certain Windows functions so that you can run programs and applications. Now, I have not used Wine in quite some time, so for me personally, I am not concerned at all that I can be infected by WannaCry and most of, if not all of, the malware and hostageware and viruses and trojans and other things that come out that are Windows based. Does that mean there are no vulnerabilities for Linux? No, there are and we will get into that in just a minute. But before we do, let's talk about Wine. Now, if you are a Wine user and you are currently on Linux, should you be concerned that your system can be infected with WannaCry? I'm going to say no. Um, it really does depend what you're doing, but looking at the research that's available out there, now some people have been running Wine and there have been some specific reports of users becoming infected with WannaCry on their Wine distribution. And in order for that to happen, you basically have to be doing something that is not what you normally would do in Wine and what's considered normal in Wine is running applications such as Microsoft Office, maybe some games that you're running, other productivity applications, basically running tools uh, and applications. So let's say you were running a game and it did need to access the internet in order to be able to play so you're playing an online game would you have to worry that you could have your system infected and the answer to that is really no because that game is going to use a specialized connection and port and by default uh, wine is not going to be uh, vulnerable to the port scanning that WannaCry does even if somebody on a network that you were on had their system infected with WannaCry and it was trying to replicate now keep in mind that WannaCry does not automatically uh, encrypt your information. It actually waits for 90 reboots. At least one of the versions do. So basically what that means is you could be a, an infected sleeper system and go to somebody's private network with other Windows systems and it would immediately begin scanning the network once you join that network and try to infect those other systems. If you are running Windows and you do not have the patch and you are allowing Samba SMB packets to uh, get through your machine on port 445 so if you're doing all of those things then it is conceivable that you could be infected I have also heard that the majority of systems being infected are actually Windows 7 and this comes from Kaspersky who are saying based on their statistics they're receiving 98 percent of the systems are Windows 7 and I have not confirmed that but uh, just for your information if you're Windows 10 of course and you may have gotten the update already without even knowing it so you may not be infectable another thing is unlike Windows which has different modes for their firewall so they have the private network they have a work network and they have a public if you were to when you go and visit a friend's house say and you get on their network if you were to put public for that network instead of private it would basically lock down all those ports including SMB ports now uh, this of course Samba here is for a server uh, and this is a client so that it can receive packets so on the firewall here if I wanted to and I have permanent and I have runtime I could go ahead and go down here to SMB ports whoops I went too far and disable client now I can't guarantee of course that that would help with wine it should technically because all applications should have to go through the firewall so that could help you but the easiest way to avoid problems with wine if you go here 
uh, in this particular article, the author talks about using wine, and he says, if you're not doing one of these three things inside wine, one, opening your mail, two, opening Dropbox links or possibly Google Drive links, or browsing the web. Now, I don't have wine installed, but, you know, I never used to do any of these things, of course. So if you're not doing those things in wine, you're really not in a position where you should be concerned. So that is my take on uh, Linux, WannaCry, and whether or not you can be infected, even if you're using wine. Now, there have been videos that have been put out, and in order to infect yourself, you would have to get a copy of WannaCry, which you can do for testing purposes. And if you launch the executable inside your Wine environment, yes, of course, it's going to do some encryption of your documents. So it would work. Uh, because what is Wine for? Well, it's to emulate, you know, Windows. So, yeah, it's going to happen. Does this mean that Linux is less secure or not secure in comparison to Windows? No, it still is way more secure. Now, and I'm talking about as a desktop operating system. It's a whole different ball of wax when you're talking about a server. I've had many people say, well, Linux isn't very secure. Just look at all the issues that we've had with servers in the past with the Mirai botnet and so on and so forth. Well, yes, that's very true. And any server that's misconfigured or not patched correctly, you can expect an issue. And most people should be doing regular updates, especially on your server, to ensure that you've had all of your updates. So it's only been maybe a week since I did my last update and I have 93 packages ready for upgrade, seven that need to be installed to support it and seven that'll be removed for a total of 359 megabytes. And you can see all the different packages here that are ready to be installed. So even for a home system, I do regular updates about weekly for my Linux system. And I do run two systems just in case there's a problem with updates with my Linux system. So I'm going to go ahead and say yes to this. Uh, actually, I'm not because I'm running OBS right now, so I don't want to create any hiccups. Uh, but anyway, you should do regular updates just like you do on any other system. And I always have a backup system, so I've got a Mac computer as a backup. And on this system right here, if my Linux distribution exploded, for whatever reason, I can actually dual boot into Windows 10, which is also updated as well. But I have not had, except for one time in recent memory, uh, an update caused a few problems with KDE Plasma that was easily fixed uh, by another update, ironically, which was immediate. So it was not an issue and everything was back up and running. And those are the the issues as far as the desktop operating system now if you're running a server it's vulnerable to a whole different level of vulnerabilities now I've talked in my previous videos about public facing systems when you are home behind a firewall and you're also behind an IOT device like a router and hopefully that device is updated and running a firewall as well and blocking ports actively so that only certain ports are available and if you want to have any incoming ports opened you would have to open them if they're not requested by the client at the time that is not a public facing system a public facing system would be a web server that has a public IP address that employs a very specific function on the network and it is visited by client computers so when we go to google.com or whatever suzy.com here to this website to visit there's a web server that's answering and as you can imagine publicly facing systems are much 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 more vulnerable because they can constantly be actively scanned for any type of exploit that's available and there's tools out there that will scan whole swaths of IP addresses and report back and even if they do find a vulnerability infect that computer immediately so unfortunately yes and does that mean Linux is more or less vulnerable as a server for a public facing system than say a Windows server no not really they're about equal now I've taught 
uh, Internet Information Services installation and usage, and I've installed and ran Exchange servers. I've installed web-based email servers in Linux. I've installed databases in Linux. I've installed many, many, many servers. And I've always said that there is no better operating system when you're dealing with web servers or services on the Internet. So it's really how you approach it and how you approach the patching and how you approach the multiple layer approach. So you want to have a layered approach to your security. And this is all on a server level. So it's, it's levels of complexity greater than worrying about a single workstation running Linux and hanging around on the Internet. So by its very nature, of course, this system is much less likely to be infected. Uh, if you're running a Windows system, you can bypass about 90% of the malware out there by simply using only a standard user account like I'm doing here and then creating an administrative account and then giving the administrative password, which should be completely different when you're logging into Windows. Uh, well, actually, I should say you log into Windows using the standard account, then you use the administrative account as necessary to open something. So this firewall config tool has been sitting here for a while now. If I go in here and try to make a change to something, let's see what it does. It immediately, again, asked me, it says, you know, system policy is preventing changes of the firewall, so you would have to go ahead and enter your password. So I'm going to enter my default password. <clears throat> which is not default my administrative password which I would have to do to make a change to this firewall so no application could make this change now the other thing I do on Linux land here uh, is run in enforcing mode SE Linux now if you have problems of course you can set enforce too permissive and then test again to see if that helps you with your problem then you can go ahead and find the specific SE Linux rule and change that uh, and then resume enforcing now of course if you did use the uh, set enforce which I cannot run so if I tried to do this it'll fail of course because I'm not administrator or root right now if you do decide to do that, so if I do a sudo set enforce permissive, it would actually do it, but it would only be during the duration that I was actually logged in. So the minute I reboot, it's going to go back to enforcing, unless I go into the configuration file and change that to be permanent. So that's my take on Linux and whether or not you have to be concerned about WannaCry on your Linux system the answer is no and the same thing for most Windows malware no you do not have to be concerned if you're a server it's a whole different ball of wax um, and it's it's definitely many 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 layers more complicated especially if you're running multiple servers so you may have a cluster of say a thousand web servers well that makes things very complicated and you have to stay right on top of updates and make sure you're provisioning a layered approach to your security. Hope you found this video useful. If you did, like and subscribe. The big thing is I always appreciate it if you share. If you want to, throw a dollar my way. Uh, consider buying me a cup of coffee on patreon.com forward slash fast gadgets. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time in another video.